Unexpected and Unintended Cure of Habit Cough by Proxy, Miles Weinberger, MD Department of Pediatrics University of California, San Diego Rady Children's Hospital Encinitas, California. In 1966, Dr. Bernie Berman, a Boston allergist, described six children with a chronic cough that could be stopped by the art of suggestion. Dr. Berman called this a habit cough. One, this disorder has been repeatedly described, sometimes with different terms but with the same description of the characteristic sound of the cough, barking or honking, and the absence of the cough once asleep. Two to eight. The frequency of habit cough diagnoses was reported at the rates of seven per year at the University of Iowa, six and nine per year at the Brompton Hospital in London, England. Seven, a median age for children with the diagnosis was 10 years at both institutions. Eight, treatment at the University of Iowa consisted of suggestion therapy. In 1991, I described nine patients who were successfully treated with suggestion therapy. Seven who could be contacted, even years later had sustained benefit. Subsequently, I reviewed our experience with 140 children seen from 1995 to 2014. Among 85 of those children who were coughing when seen in the clinic, cessation of cough with suggestion therapy was successful in 81. In this letter, I present some unexpected and unintended additional observations related to this disorder. In early February 2019, I received an email from the father of a 12-year-old girl with a three-month history of a repetitive daily cough that was absent once asleep. His online search for help led to me. He and his daughter were at a location 3,000 miles from me. Her pediatric pulmonologist was prescribing inhaled corticosteroids, which were providing no benefit, because she met the criteria for habit cough, I undertook, for the first time, delivering the usual suggestion therapy 9 via Skype. Cessation of cough. Occurred within 15 minutes. The girl's father recorded the procedure and created a website, www.habitcough.com, that contained his daughter's history and an audiovisual recording. The full video was also placed on YouTube, https colon slash slash www.youtube.com slash watch. V1 slash forge and called 8QDJ0 and T1 slash 4670S. Although the outcome of this patient's treatment via Skype was a satisfying experience, an unexpected and unintended effect of the video was subsequently reported to me. I received unsought emails from the parents of three children and two adults, indicating that watching the young girl respond to suggestion therapy in the video resulted in cessation of their chronic cough. The first of individuals these reached me in early April 2019. The mother of a 10 year old boy described her previously healthy son who developed a dry hacking cough that has not stopped, except at night when he's asleep after a viral illness two months earlier. His pediatrician prescribed steroids, azithromycin, three different antihistamines, Montelukast Singulaire, amoxicillin and clavulinate, augmentin, albuterol and beclomethazone. QVAR, benzonitate, tessalon pearl, dextromethorphan, robitussin DM, and honey, with no benefit. Chest radiography and laboratory tests provided no diagnosis. The mother, a pediatric nurse, had seen the video at www.habitcough.com and asked her son to sit by her and watch the video. The mother indicated that he immediately identified with the patient, he jumped right into it and stopped coughing. An email more than a month later indicated that the previous coughing was still no longer present. In May 2019, a mother of an eight-year-old girl sent me an email describing her daughter as having a bad cold several months earlier that was followed by two months of a persistent daily cough characteristic of the habit cough. Her physician obtained chest radiography and prescribed asthma and allergy medications without benefit. A pulmonologist told her daughter to take some ice water when you feel the cough coming on. None of the measures were of benefit. Searching for help on the internet, the mother found the video on YouTube. While the two of them watched the suggestion therapy procedure on the video, her daughter commented excitedly, I can hold the cough back. This was followed by cessation of coughing. Mother stated, the coughing stopped. Like turning off a switch. A subsequent mail from the mother reported that the cough was still gone four days later. In June 2019, 
I received an email from the father of a nine-year-old boy with a history of motor and vocal tics who had a persistent repetitive chronic dry cough. The father indicated that the cough occurred several times per minute and was not present when asleep. When watching the video, the boy first stated, it's different than mine, but then associated what he was observing with his own condition and found he could suppress the cough. The cough was still gone the following day. I also received emails from two adult women, 58 and 68 years old. They both indicated that watching the 30-minute video and following along with the dialogue resulted in cessation of their chronic cough. One of the women stated, I listened to the video and concentrated. It really works. The other woman commented, It's amazing, mind over matter. Habit cough causes considerable morbidity, including well-intentioned iatrogenesis, unneeded testing, unnecessary medication, and even hospitalization. Nine several variations of suggestion are well documented as curative for habit cough. One comma four comma five comma eight. The current unanticipated and unintended observations reported in three children and two adults demonstrate further the amenability of habit cough to suggestion. Clinical characteristics of habit cough are sufficiently distinct that the diagnosis can be made by the typical history of a repetitive harsh, barking, or honking cough occurring up to several times per minute, that is absent once asleep. No testing is needed for diagnosis, and no medications are needed for treatment. Knowledge and skillful interaction with the patient are the tools for diagnosing and treating this disorder. Disclosures, the author has no conflicts of interest to report. Funding, none.